Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to explore what I would consider Shadow of the Earth 3 meta most powerful build. With this arcane breed build, you will easily decimate most Shadow of the Earth 3 bosses. And without spoiling anything, none of the DLC main story bosses are immune to bleed damage, including the DLC endgame boss. So if you are currently struggling with some of the DLC content, and especially the endgame boss, give this build a try and I promise you will not be disappointed. There's so much information I would like to share with you on how to play this build effectively, so without any further delay, let's get started. The centerpiece for this build is the Impenetrable Thorns. The bleed build up on this spell is so ridiculous to the point it can potentially trigger a bloodless effect twice on your target in a single cast. It releases three prumbles that can travel a long distance until it reaches its target, and then violently erupt and cause massive bleed build up on the main target as well as any nearby enemies. Despite having an extremely good range, in order to maximize the potential of this sorcery, you have to cast it from a close distance to your target. This is because when you cast it from a long range, the three thorns will travel and spread from each other, so only the middle one will hit the target while the other two will completely miss. However, if you cast impenetrable thorns close to your target, all three thorns will hit the enemy at the same time and deal massive damage and bleed build up. Another reason why you should cast impenetrable thorns from close range is because certain items in our build like Lord of Blood Talisman and the White Mask will not activate if you trigger blood loss far away from your character. You have to be close to your enemy when you trigger blood loss to benefit from these items. Be mindful that every time you cast Inventable Thorns you deal a little damage to your health pool. However, we can offset this by using items that have healing over time effects like the Blessed Dew Talisman. You can obtain Inventable Thorns from Shadow Keep in Skadu Altus I'll quickly show you how to get this sorcery, but be mindful that entering the Shadow Keep will speed up the events of the wallet, and certain NPC's quests will advance and might change locations. With this route, you can get impenetrable thorns as soon as you start the DLC and without having to fight anything along the way. Typically, you need to finish Castle in Seas to gain access to Skadu Altos, but you can skip this by activating the Spirit Spring near Elder's Hovel and use it to reach Fort of Rebermand located in Skadu Altos. Now, make your way over here near Moore's Ruins and jump down to this underground area and then climb the ladder to reach Bonny Village. Once you are in Bonnie Village, ride all the way north to enter Shadowkeep Church District. Now, simply follow this route I'm showing you here and you will be able to backdoor Shadowkeep. With this route, you successfully skipped the Golden Hippopotamus boss fight at the beginning of Shadowkeep and now we can obtain impenetrable thorns without a single fight.
So which staff we should use to cast impenetrable souls? We need a staff that has a strong arcane scaling since the arcane stat will directly influence the bleed buildup effect. The best staff you can use to cast impenetrable souls is the maternal staff. At maximum upgrade, this new Grand Stone staff has an impressive A scaling with both arcane and intelligence. Initially, I wanted to use the Albanyoric staff with this build since it has an impressive S scaling with arcane, but from software nerfed the status effect build up with the Albanyoric staff for some time now. However, you can still use the Albanyoric staff until you get your hands on the maternal staff. You can also use the staff of the guilty to boost impenetrable swords damage by 20%. You don't cast your spells with the Staff of the Guilty, but just hold it while casting to benefit from its passive effect. Alongside the Maternal Staff, you can use any good arcane weapon. I highly recommend the Rivers of Black Katana. It really shines with high arcane builds like this one. However, if you want to use something new from the DLC, the Blood Fiend's Arm Colossal Weapon currently has the highest bleed per attack when you infuse it with the Bleed Affinity. It also comes with a strong AoE bleed heavy attack that will easily trigger a blood loss effect on all enemies in front of you. We are not using many buffs for this build, but since the impenetrable swords requires 24 face, you might as well invest one more point and gain access to golden bow to increase your damage done by 15% and damage negation by 10% for 80 seconds. We are also using Bestial Vitality to compensate for some of the damage taken every time we use Impenetrable Swords. Use Dragon Communion Seal to cast these two incantations. I was also using Boiled Crab Consumable to boost my damage negation by 20% for 1 minute. If you have access to the Iron Jar Aromatic, you can use it to greatly boost your damage negation and boys, similar to the Endure Ash of War effect but for a much longer duration. This will also enable you to face tank your enemies while exploding them with Impenetrable Swords. However, it cripples your character's movement speed, but you can compensate for this by using a small weapon with the Bloodhound Step Ash of War. If you enjoy playing with spell summons, you can use Mog's Great Rune along with Mimic Tear to absolutely destroy certain encounters. While Mog's Great Rune is active, your Mimic Tear will heal and gain 30% damage increase every time there is a blood loss effect near him. He will also heal you for 10% of your maximum health every time he kills an enemy. And don't forget you can empower your spirit summon with the new leveling system by consuming revealed spirit ash at any site of grace. For the talismans, Lord Blood's exaltation will boost our attack bar by 20% for 20 seconds every time we trigger blood loss. The damage increase will affect both your melee and spell attack power. This is a mandatory talisman, but be aware that casting from long range will certainly not trigger this talisman. Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman will increase our physical damage negation by 20%. Graven Mass Talisman to increase Impenetrable Swords base damage by 8%. Although you could potentially swap this for Blessed Dew Talisman to give yourself some healing over time effect to compensate for Impenetrable Swords damage taken. Finally, the Beloved Stardust will max out your spell casting speed but it will increase your damage taken. I had no problem with the extra damage taken thanks to Golden Vow, Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman and Bold Crab Consumable. However, you can swap Blood of Stardust with Radagon Icon for a weaker casting speed without compromising your damage negation. For the Flask of Wonders Physic, we are using the Opaline Heart Tier to increase all damage negation by 15% for 3 minutes. Magic Shrouding Crack Tier to increase our sources damage by 20% for 3 minutes. For the armor, I was using the White Mask to gain 10% extra attack power for 20 seconds every time we trigger Blood Loss. Alpish's set increases the base sorcery damage for impenetrable thorns by 6% per piece, except for the legs. I'm using the Borgos Greaves for some extra damage negation and boys. I'm using the Astrologer starter class, but you can also use any of the following classes to play this build. I would strongly recommend that you check my DLC starter guide to embark your character's damage done and damage negation in less than one hour and without having to fight anything along the way. At level 150, I had 55 Vigor. Anything between 55 and 60 is acceptable. Enemies in the DLC simply hit a lot harder than the base game and we need a large HP pool to compensate. Impenetrable Thorns is very cheap to cast, so 24 mines should give you enough FP to cast multiple times before you have to drink another FP flask. 14 Endurance to have medium roll with our current equipment. 12 Strength and 18 Dexterity to meet the minimum requirements to use Rivers of Blood. 21 Intelligence and 25 Faith to meet the requirements for the Maternal Staff, Impenetrable Swords, 
and golden bow. Arcane is your most important stat since it will directly increase your breed buildup with both your main weapon and sorcery. I do recommend however you take this build to level 180 as I did because it will make the whole experience a lot more enjoyable. This brings this guide to an end, thank you so much for watching. I do hope you found this video enjoyable, let me know what you think down in the comments and if you have any questions regarding this build or eldering in general, please let me know. I will try to answer to the best of my limited knowledge. Once again, thank you for watching and have a great day.